Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, November the 4th, 2019. It is currently 10.08 a.m. Central Time, and this is a live broadcast. And once again, if you've listened to my live broadcast, you probably know what I'm about to say. Once again, I hit the go live button, and guess what I forgot to do? As soon as I hit the go live button, I look down and I discovered this. See if you can hear it. Yes, that's my phone. Once again, I forgot to remove the phone from the study. So, yes. Yes. I, th I think what we're what we're learning here and I'm I'm walking to the other part of the house to put the phone somewhere far away from where I am doing this live broadcast. I think what we are learning here is life doesn't always go the way you had planned. Now that's a small example, right? That's a small example. It's just a phone that's not where it should be. That's a small example. It's not that big a deal, but it is a, it's, it's symbolic of how things don't always work out the way you want them to. Sometimes uh, you have plans that, hey, this is gonna work out this way. And sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes life goes from, fr and there I was trying to, my, my dog decided to start causing problems. So see, this entire live broadcast is falling apart right as I start. But just stay with me. It's all going to make sense in the end. Because this is all, I'm, I'm glad all of this is going wrong because it's going to fit in perfectly with what we're going to talk about. Let's set this up this way. Now, uh, it is a live broadcast. Um, we are having all kinds of things going on with our church app. I'll be talking about that uh, later. But for now, I'm just going to focus in on what I want to do in this live broadcast. I want to have a devotional study. I want to share a devotional thought. And I, I started with all of those problems for a reason, right? Because, well, I mean, that wasn't my plan. But as soon as the plan went wrong, it started to fit into the overall narrative that I'm going to try to get across this morning. I think you know that... In your life, things don't always go the way you want them to. In fact, sometimes it's small things that just irritate you. Sometimes there are tragic things that comes close to completely destroying you. And when you become a Christian, guess what you discover? Things still go wrong. Problems still occur. Sometimes we are almost told that, hey, when you become a Christian, all your problems are going to be fixed. Everything is going to work out. And when, and when something is not going the way you want to, just pray and God will fix it for you. That's sometimes the way Christianity is sold. The reality is it doesn't always work that way. You can be a Christian and still you can have a loved one get a diagnosis of terminal cancer and you can pray and they can still die. You can be a Christian and your family can be struck with some kind of horrible crime where, you know, someone is hurt, someone is injured, someone is killed. All kinds of things can go. Christianity is not some like, hey, guess what? You're now isolated from all problems. You know, you're, you're going to be protected and everything's going to go your way. It's not the way it works. And I think for a young Christian, sometimes that can be that can be a, a major a major crisis point in their journey as a Christian because I think they're like, hey, I'm now serving God. I'm now trying to obey God. I'm now following God. Why is things going so bad? And you get confused. Also, so one, and this is very important, and follow me. One, when you become a Christian, it doesn't resolve all the problems. Problems and tragedy are still going to happen. Life is not going to go the way you want it, all right? Number two, this is very important. When you become a Christian, sometimes you feel that you now have all the answers. You've got the, I mean, I've got a Bible. I can answer everything. And sometimes you're still left confused and baffled, even with the Bible. Now, I say all of that because, well, late last night, well, it was around, it wasn't last night. It was around 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. I was listening to family radio, and they read two verses from the book of Habakkuk, all right? From the book of Habakkuk, they read two verses. 
And as soon as they read the verses, I was struck with these words, yet I will. Yet I will. Now I'll read the rest of part of this verse. This is a book of Habakkuk, chapter three. I won't give you the specific verse. We'll come back to it in a minute. But the 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 book uh, the it reads this way. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. And as soon as as soon as they read that on the air, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. That sounds so good. And I'm like, wonderful. But then immediately I started thinking about the context to the book of Habakkuk. And I was like, whoa, that gives those words even more meaning. And I think that, that the book of Habakkuk provides a lesson that we that all Christians need to be reminded of. Young Christians need to be taught early on in their Christian life. And it has everything to do with what I was saying at the beginning. Life is not always going to go the way you want to. And just because you're a Christian, you're not going to be protected from all the bad things and you're not going to necessarily have all the answers. So let's go back and at least establish the basic context to the book of Habakkuk. Now, if you do not know, the book of Habakkuk is written as a conversation between the prophet and God. Habakkuk will ask God some questions. God responds. There's this kind of question thing. Now, some Bibles, sometimes you've got to pay close attention. You're like, wait a minute, that's Habakkuk speaking. Wait, okay, wait. Okay, did God just start speaking? And sometimes you can get a little confused. Some translations, my Bible sitting up here doesn't have this. The Bible I have next to it, it will have Habakkuk's, they'll say complaint, or some will say Habakkuk's questions. And then it'll say the Lord's answer. Um, let's see if they do that everywhere. Um, yes, uh, Habakkuk's second complaint, the Lord's answer. They divide the sections so you know exactly who is speaking. But just you just when you read the book, you have to go, okay, here's Habakkuk. He's got some questions. I, I will say he is confused. And what he is confused about is life, what things that are happening. He just doesn't understand. But what makes Habakkuk so powerful is God's answer is even more baffling and more confusing, confusing, especially to Habakkuk. And I think it would be confusing to you if you lived during that time. Let's look at Habakkuk chapter one, just to set this up. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. O oh Lord. How long shall I cry and thou will not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence and thou will not save. Now here, immediately we can hear Habakkuk's frustration, his confusion. There's things happening. He's crying out to God, but God doesn't seem to be doing anything. Now this is something every Christian has to be prepared for. Things are not always going to go right in your life. And again, it may be something as small as at the beginning of this broadcast. Oh, I forgot the phone. Oh, wait, now my dog is starting to walk around. Okay, this whole thing is going to get ruined. Who cares if the live broadcast got ruined? It's an insignificant thing. But if it becomes major issues, yeah, you can begin to question what God is doing and what God is not listening. Verse 3, Habakkuk continues, why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance for spoiling and violence are before me and there are that rise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked and judgment doth never go forth for the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. All right, now he's like, look, there's all kinds of problems going on all around him in his society, in his world. Things are not going right. The wicked are everywhere. Wrong judgment is proceeding. There is not justice. There is only unrighteous. It is flourishing. Things are not going right. Come on, God. Where are you? Why are you not listening? Why are you not intervening? Why are you not saving? That seems pretty straightforward. But God's answer is somewhat shocking. Verse 5. Behold, ye among the heathen and regard and wonder marvelously, 
For I will work a work in your days which you will not believe, though it be told to you. All right, you don't know what's going on. You're confused. You're bothered. You want me to intervene. Okay, just just watch because I'm going to do a, a, a work. And some translations have it this way. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. I'm going to do, you want me to do something, I'm going to do something and you're not going to believe it. You're not, you're going to be utterly amazed by it. And even if someone told you I was going to do this, you would not believe it. And what is he going to do? For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. All right, everything's going wrong in society. Everything is horrible. And God's solution is to raise up the Chaldeans to march forward, to conquer, to to bring into captivity, He's going to use the Chaldeans as kind of a purging, punishing force. And the Chaldeans are viewed as evil and ungodly and unrighteous and pagan. And so now Habakkuk is going, wait a minute, I have a problem here. And your solution sounds horrifying, horrible. It sounds like people are going to suffer and die. And that is your solution? He's baffled by it. He is confused by it. He doesn't understand it. And what this demonstrates, again, a believer is not somehow protected from all the difficulties and all the problems and all the sufferings in life. And it also demonstrates that even as a believer, sometimes we still don't understand and sometimes we're still confused even if we read the Bible and think we have it figured out. Figured out. Habakkuk gets the answer and he is completely confused. And you can read the conversation back and forth, back and forth, uh, chapter one, chapter two. But then we get to chapter three, right? Then we get to chapter three. And this leads us to what I heard this early this morning. And uh, I, I'm just going to read, I'm going to start from verse 16 and go down to the end because I think then we'll get the, uh, the entire context, all right? Listen to this. When I heard, my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up upon the people, he will invade them with his troops. He hears all of this, and there is a physical reaction to it and there is trembling there's i mean it it's descriptive language of how he feels he is confused he is perplexed he is scared i mean this is an emotional response and then look what he says in verse 17 although the fig tree shall not blossom neither shall the fruit be in the vines the labor of the olive shall fail or uh, shall yeah shall fell and the fields shall yield no meat the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls all right when everything collapses even though everything collapses okay although all of this happens although everything completely utter collapses there's nothing but apparent destruction and confusion around me this leads to verse 18 yet I will. Yet I will. I don't understand. It's going to be pain. It's going to be suffering. It's going to be confusion. I don't understand. Yet I will. What powerful words. Habakkuk doesn't understand. Why is he going to use the Chaldeans? Why is it going to involve, uh, you know, being conquered and, and, and captivity and destruction and suffering and death? Why is it going to involve all those things? When, and even if, and he says, and even if everything falls completely and utter apart, there's a complete collapse of everything. Yet I will. And what will he do? Yet I will rejoice in the Lord I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. 
He will make my feet like hinds feet. He shall make me to walk upon my mine high places to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. The point is verse 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. He's not going to rejoice necessarily in all the calamity and destruction around him. He may not rejoice in that, but he's going to rejoice in the Lord. He's going to joy in the God of his salvation. He may not rejoice in everything that is happening, but he's going to rejoice in God. He's going to trust in God. He's going to find joy in the God of his salvation. That's that's what he's going to find joy in. Not joy in the circumstance, but joy in the Lord. Not necessarily rejoice, you know, specifically like I rejoice because this horrible thing is happening, but I'm going to rejoice in God. And if this is part of God's plan, I will rejoice. Now, this is kind of the interesting thing I was thinking about this morning when I heard that verse. I was thinking, okay, here he's dealing with the Chaldeans. He's dealing with invasion. I mean, he's dealing with something on a massive scale. I mean, a gigantic scale. Something for us to even, you know, it would be for, it would be like you and church praying, oh, look, Lord, look at America. It's a mess. You know, unrighteousness is everywhere. It's just a complete, ungodliness is running rampant. There's no justice. Everything, uh, evil is being called good. Good is being called evil. We've lost all touch with reality. We've lost all touch with biblical morality. Lord, please do something. And God says, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in, and you just name whatever nation, they're going to come in and they're going to destroy everything and they're going to take you into captivity. And that is my answer to your problem. You would be like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, could you bring yourself to say, okay, Lord, even if they come in, everything, even if everything falls apart, even if the economy collapses, even if I don't have what I need, if I don't even have the basic necessities, even if people suffer and die, Lord, yet... I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. That's hard enough to even comprehend on a large scale. But we are not constantly faced with these large scale catastrophes, large scale tragedies. And we are faced with the daily routine of frustration and questions and aggravations. And I think that no matter if it's something on a large scale or something on a small scale, what we have to do is trust that even if God doesn't appear to be in charge, even if we don't even perceive him involved, even if he appears to be silent, we trust in him. When the smallest thing goes wrong, we respond, well, yet... I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Even when the smallest thing goes wrong. Now, again, we can compare it to the big things, but I think sometimes it's the everyday occurrences when something little... Again, I, you know, this, this broadcast started, it may have seemed foolish, but I want to use it as my main point here because I think it's key to this entire narrative. This is what could have happened. I could have left the phone here and it could have started ringing and mess up the live broadcast. And then when it was done, I would hit delete. And then I would walk around today going, man, that's so frustrating. I'm so irritated that I forgot the phone. Okay. I got to try to record that again. I got to try to do that again. My dog started walking around. I could have been like, oh man, oh man, he's going to mess up. He's going to mess up this live broadcast. And then when the live broadcast gets messed up, when it's over, hit delete and then spend 15, even if it's only 15 minutes complaining, frustrated. You, wherever you are, if you're listening to me live, wherever you are today, there's going to be things that are not going to go your way. It's not going to work. And there may be things that happen that you just are confused about. You may be watching the news today going, what is going on in our country? What is happening? And it makes no sense. Look, Christianity doesn't guarantee that we're going to somehow just escape all the problems in life. We are confronted with the same tragedies and the same problems everyone else is. And just because we are Christians, sometimes we think we have all the answers. We don't. But here's what we can do. Yet, I 
will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 18. Write those words down somewhere and look at them every single day. Now remember, they're not written about some small detail in life. They're dealing with an absolute national, you know, cataclysmic event. You know, the Chaldeans are coming. The Chaldeans are coming. Destruction is coming. Captivity is coming. I mean, that's... As, as I'm, I'm just sitting here looking at the introduction um, in my Bible. This is what it says. Habakkuk is written as a conversation between the prophet and God. Habakkuk asks God's questions and God answers him. Writing only a few years before the fall of Jerusalem, which occurred in 587 BC, Habakkuk could not understand why God would use wicked Babylon to punish Judah. God replied that Babylon would eventually get what it deserves. Also, Habakkuk concluded with a prayer confessing his continuing trust in, in the rightness of God's dealing with the nations. Christians are often puzzled, as was Habakkuk, about the church's suffering from non-Christian opposition, but they also see the combination of God's wrath and mercy and the cross of Christ so that they pray with Habakkuk and um, in wrath remember mercy. Okay, yes, bottom line is suffering was coming, punishment was coming, difficulty was coming, and it seemed like a weird answer to the problem, right? You, what you really want is saying, okay, God, get rid of all the wicked people, protect us. And like, no, we're all, ever we, that's not the way it's, it doesn't always work that way. What his response by the end is just, yet, yet I will, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of our, of thy salvation. His situation is much larger than probably what many of us will face. There are people listening to me, possibly that you have faced horrific tragedy, unspeakable you know, things that I can never even comprehend or imagine. And it's not easy just to say, hey, well, just rejoice in God. I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm not even saying, I'm not, I'm not even saying that to present that as that's your answer to how you feel. I am saying that's what Habakkuk did. And it screams at us as a model for Christians to just be prepared. We're not going to, we're not going to escape trouble. We're not always going to have the answer, but we can just commit ourselves to every in every situation. Don't respond with complaining. Respond with rejoicing in the Lord and finding joy in the God of my salvation. Now, when someone, let's make this very clear before we end this. If you see someone who just faced unspeakable devastation and tragedy and destruction in their in their life, don't just walk up and get them, get pat them on the back and say, "Well, rejoice in the Lord." Find joy in the God of your salvation. There's a time and place to share this. All right. Sometimes in the midst of tragedy, it's best to be silent and just to be present. Say, I'm here, whatever you need, and let them vent. Let them share their pain. Let them share their frustration. Let them share. There comes a time much later to then offer some scriptural perspective. The scriptural perspective is God acts Sometimes in the way we would never want. Sometimes he acts in a way we would never hope for, ask for, or desire. Sometimes that action is confusion, confusing and makes absolutely no sense. And we can either reject it and then basically try to live a life without God, which you're still going to have the disturbing circumstances that you don't understand, or we can say, I don't understand, but I'm going to rejoice. Yet, I will rejoice and the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 18. Let's make that the verse of the week. Memorize Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 18. Let's try to memorize a verse this week. Okay, I just think it's a powerful verse. I'm, I'm so glad that at 3 o'clock in the morning, that was the verse they decided to read on family radio I mean, it, it struck me hard that yet I will, yet, 
Yeah, yeah, yet. And the context is, yet, because of, even though all of these things are happening, yet I will do this. And if you read the verse right before it, it even makes it more powerful. Even though absolute calamity befalls, falls all around me, even though everything collapses, this is what I will do. What a powerful, powerful thought. There you have it, the book of Habakkuk. All right, well, I will stop there. I just wanted to do a little devotional thought this morning. There's a lot of other things going on, but um, well, well, we'll talk about them at a later time. I just want to keep this all together. I may come back on live here in a minute to talk about some of the app situations. Um, but for now, I just wanted to share that. And uh, well, hopefully that will benefit you greatly today. You can email me at newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. Share your thoughts. Let me know where you're listening. And, um, well, we'll be back hopefully soon. Hopefully, maybe maybe the next few minutes. Who knows? Uh, maybe later this afternoon. Put it this way. I have no idea how the rest of the day will go. But I know what I'm supposed to do, no matter how frustrating or bad the circumstances may be. We all know now Habakkuk chapter 3 and that very powerful verse that yet I will rejoice. Yet I will find joy in the God of my salvation. Very powerful truth. All right, God bless. Have a great Monday.